Good morning, everyone, and welcome to How to Fluster Them Seminar. I'm Cup, and I will be showing you all sorts of ways to fluster and rile up your boyfriend, girlfriend, lover, anyone who you just want to see all blushy and cute. In just a moment, I'll be choosing a volunteer from the audience to help me out with some demonstrating. But before I do that, I wanted to touch on something very important and maybe even more attractive than what I'm going to teach you today, and that is consent. All of these techniques I'm going to talk about today are guaranteed to work on someone who's equally as attracted to you as you are to them. But to someone who isn't feeling you, these will just be creepy as hell. So, before you use these powerful tips, make sure you're using them on someone who's consenting, okay? Consent comes first. Got it? Are you sure? What comes first? Consent. Consent, consent. consent baby. Okay, right on. Now, let's get ready to see some major blushing. <laughs> All right, so let's start looking for a brave volunteer to come up here and try to let me fluster you. Hmm. I kind of want someone who thinks this isn't going to work. Who thinks they would be really tough to crack? Who wants to be flustered today? Hmm. How about you? You look perfect. <laughs> Come on up here. I have a chair just for you here. Yeah. Come on, sit down. What's your name? Hmm, great name. Are you willing to be my volunteer today? Just so you know, I'm going to pull out all the stops to make you blushy. Is that okay with you? Oh, you dare me? Hmm, okay. This will be fun. All right, everyone, give it up for our skeptical but super cute volunteer. Now, again, we're going to assume that you're already in a consenting relationship and your lover is just minding their own business, doing some work or something at their desk, okay? Now, this is a great time to fluster them because they're really not expecting it. After all, we all know those distracting a partner tropes are so fun, right? But where do you begin? If you've never flustered anyone before, how do you start? Well, all you need to know is that if you remember fate, your flustering will be great. This is the basis for every squirm, every blushy face, every nervous look away. It all starts with fate. Focus, attention, tingles, and eye contact. Those are the biggest things you can do to fluster your lover without being overtly touchy or sexual. Now, as a side note, we do offer that slightly spicier seminar for a discount since you've taken today's seminar, but we can talk more about that after the session, okay? All right, just to reiterate, if you remember fate, your flustering will be great. So let's dive right in. Sometimes flustering someone is as easy as an accidental brush on their shoulder as you walk by. But as you can see, that really didn't do much for a volunteer here. Seems like they really will be a challenge. <laughs> but you could also come up behind them and put your hand gently on their shoulder. Just peek over what they're doing. Right, because now you're behind them, which gives them the indication that, hey, someone's focused on me now. Your body, without doing much, is in a protective position. And this will hopefully make your lover feel really safe. But see, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just looking, just observing to see how they react to my touch and me being so close to them. Just making them wonder what I'm going to do next. I'm giving them attention without really giving them attention. <laughs> That'll get some people really flustered. It looks like our volunteer is still holding strong, kind of acting like they're unbothered. Uh, we'll get them, don't worry. In this case, you may need to say something encouraging about whatever they're doing, but make sure to whisper it in their ear really softly so they kind of have to like perk up to hear you. And when they perk up, it's almost like their senses are heightened. And this is great because now all your whispers will be extra tingly and effective. 
So just come in close, whisper something in their ear. Make sure you get close enough so they can actually feel your breath on their neck and their ear. It's pointless if their neck isn't receiving any attention here. It's a key fluster point, so do not neglect the neck. Write that down. All right, so check this out. Hey, babe, what are you doing? Oh, wow, that looks really great. I hope you show me when it's done. Now, as you can see, they're getting a little flustered, but still staying strong for the most part. Also note that my stance hasn't changed. My hand is still on their shoulder and my chest is right up against their back. And my mouth is nice and close to their ear. If your lover has long hair, you can use your free hand to gently and slowly tuck their hair behind their ear. Feels really, really good. Because remember, they're so heightened right now that even the smallest touch will make them so flustered. See, they're really trying to hide it now. It's so cute and it's just perfect for what I need. So this is great. And actually, this stage is what's known as the initial flush. And it's exactly what we want because once they start getting a little giddy, maybe they're blushing a little, they're getting quite affected by those tingly whispers. They won't be able to control it much longer as it gets more and more intense for them. Oh, and it will get more intense. <laughs> Hey, are you doing okay? I'm <laughs> good. Let me know if you want to stop, all right? <laughs> okay, let's keep going then. Okay, just checking in with my volunteer again, because we have to remember that consent can always be taken back safely at any time and without fear of retaliation, okay? Huge, huge point here. So I've just checked in with my volunteer and they are good to keep going. So now that we've gotten them to the initial flush, which our volunteer has given us a really good one, we have really not too much flinching, but you can see how they're trying to squish their face into looking normal when clearly they're feeling really just so squirmy and shy. So yes, this is exactly what I want. So what I'm going to do now, because this is the perfect state to really start flustering them, is start establishing my eye contact with them. Now, this is going to be huge, and statistically, it will be what does the most flustering. And the beauty of eye contact is you really don't have to do that much. The fact that you're gazing right into their beautiful eyes, sending a silent signal to them that they're important and that they're holding your attention. And this is kind of major because today it's pretty rare to have a conversation with someone who isn't like immersed in their phone or something, right? Like people aren't used to getting focused on completely. So this will feel a little uncomfortable for them and maybe even for you, but just go with what you're comfortable with. Like if they're smiling and looking away, like our volunteer here, you can even say something like this. Hey, don't you look away. Look at me, babe. Good. Keep looking right into my eyes. Can you do that for me, sweetness? And that will be really effective for a lot of people. Forced eye contact is really powerful that way. But if they're feeling obviously uncomfortable, just back off and feel it out until they're comfortable, okay? <laughs> but this volunteer seems to be getting really flustered and super cute. So this is great. You could also say something like, Oh, look at you. You're so cute when you're all shy like this. This is also a really good time to use any of their favorite pet names that they like. Some examples include baby, sweetie, darling, cutie, things like that. Since I don't personally know this volunteer, I've just been rotating a bunch of different ones in their ear, and you can see how effective it's been. Anyways, back to the eye contact. The fact that you're fully connecting with them and you don't want to look away, this can be, you know, kind of intimidating. But if you hold their gaze and just smile a little bit, sort of eases the situation and takes it from maybe a little creepy to a nurturing and safe space for them. <laughs> you see, they let a little smile come through. <laughs> hey, I thought you said you were going to be tough to crack. <laughs> You're making this way too easy for me, you know that? <laughs> All right. 
Now that we know the basics, let's put it into practice a little bit. This is what you do to get them really blushy. You ready, sweetheart? So you're going to want to take the outside edge of your pointer finger, make like a little hook, and then place that hook right under their chin like this. And then from here, you can even take your thumb and just hold their chin with it. Now be warned, this alone will make them extremely blushy and flustered. You could already see that our volunteers are doing their very best to keep it together. But at this point, they're melted, they're squirming, and they're basically waiting for your next move on pins and needles. And this is a great position because they're still fully in control of their own body. If they wanted to, they could easily get out of this by just moving their head back. Hey, can you move your head back for me? Good, good. See? But because I have complete control over their chin, I can now control the movement of their head which can be quite fun. See, I can make them nod their head yes, or <laughs> shake their head no, or just move it as I see fit. And this is super cute. Of course, we're not going to be rough with them here. It's all about being gentle and soft, but still giving that confidence, right? And all the while keeping that eye contact locked in. My eyes have not left their eyes since we started this whole move. <laughs> it's definitely affecting them at this point. So when you master this move, you can actually build upon it with some more advanced techniques. So you have your hook underneath their chin. You take their thumb, but before you get it onto their chin, you just gently graze their bottom lip with it. Now, they aren't going to know if this was an accident or this was intentional, but either way, it's going to drive them crazy. <laughs> I mean, the fact that you just touched their lips is going to send them over the edge, but they're going to wonder if you meant to do that on purpose or if it was just an accident. They're going to want more of that for sure, but you're not going to give it to them because you want to maintain that sense of curiosity and also continue to respect their boundaries, of course. And hey, also, side note, if you're going to do this, please make sure your thumb is clean. <laughs> This would be so gross if you're chopping garlic or, I don't know, cooking or something. Okay, just clean thumbs, people. Anyways, now you've grazed their lips with your clean thumb. And you have their chin in your hand. And you take that pointer finger and just lift their chin up really slow. And again, make sure you're looking right into their eyes. You don't want to break your gaze here, okay? And if they look away, that's okay. Just means they're getting really shy, which is what we want, right? <laughs> See, our volunteer is absolutely losing it right now. And they don't want to look me in the eyes. So if this happens, I'm just going to remind them again. Don't you look away, cutie. Keep looking into my eyes, okay? Can you do that for me? Oh, they're so flustered. So at this point, they're totally flustered. But no matter how much they squirm, you just remain completely focused on them. I mean, just look at the amount of squirming we're getting from our very brave and very flustered volunteer here. <laughs> it's really cute. At this point, you do have the option of giving them a little kiss. Because in their mind, this chin lift is preparing them for a kiss. You're positioning their lips in a way that would be very convenient for you to kiss them, which would make them feel really cared for and special. And so our volunteer is probably really hoping for a kiss right now. But <laughs> that's for the next session where things get a little more steamy. Hey, I know, but this is powerful stuff. You gotta master the basics first, all right? And speaking of, what comes first? Yes, consent. And don't forget, fate will make your flustering great. Thank you so much for your attention. Let's take a five minute break and then I'll answer any questions you may have. Hey, was that all right? <laughs> you did so good for me. Thank you for being so vulnerable for me. 
and a bunch of strangers. <laughs> hmm, yeah, that's what they all say. But I had a feeling I'd be able to get to you. And besides, I love a good challenge. You really thought you could make it through without blushing? Hmm. Yeah, well, my method has been rigorously tested. So frankly, you didn't stand a chance. <laughs> but thank you again for volunteering. Was everything okay? You feeling good? Alright, great. You can take your seat in the audience, cutie. 